internet and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Tim. I'm with Imagination Computer Camps and today I'm going to show you how to create a tilt shift photo effect using Photoshop. Now you might be asking yourself, Tim, what is a tilt shift photo? Well, to answer it simply, it's a photo effect that allows us to make the subjects of our photos look tiny or miniature. It's kind of a really cool effect once you do it and it's really simple to learn too and that's what's really great about it. In this tutorial I'm going to be using uh, CS6 however I do know for a fact that if you have an older version of Photoshop this uh, these same steps will work just as well. So I have two guidelines that I recommend you follow when trying to apply this effect to a photograph. First is you want it to be a wide angle photo like the one I have here of my Georgia camp. You don't want it to be too uh, cropped in tightly to the uh, to the subjects, uh, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Second, uh, since we're going to make an effect of things looking tiny, we need to have a photo from a higher angle, and we need this because it kind of creates a natural sight line of how you would normally look at something uh, that's tiny, right? If it's smaller, you're going to be looking down on it. So naturally, having a photo from a higher angle is going to make uh, the miniature effect more prevalent. Okay, so once you have your photo open in Photoshop, you're going to come over here to this button here, which is the uh, quick mask mode button. Or if you're into hotkeys, you can just hit the Q button. All right, next we're going to select the gradient button, which if it's hidden, it might be behind the uh, paint bucket tool or the 3D material drop tool. But once you select that, you want to come up to the oh, once you select the gradient tool, you want to come up and make sure that the reflected uh, gradient option is selected up here at the top. Okay, once you have this selected, you're going to come down to your photograph. You want to go somewhere in toward the middle of your subjects or subject, depending on how many people you have, and you're going to shift and click and drag up. Now you'll notice once you do this, you're going to get this red gradient across the middle of your photograph. Uh, what you want is you want to make sure that the gradient goes well above and below your subjects. And this is going to be the foundation for our effect. Once you kind of have a, a good gradient above and below, what you're going to do is you're going to exit quick mask mode. And once you do that, you're going to see that we have these marching ants selecting the top and bottom of the, the, of the photo and in between are our subjects. So you want to make sure that there's plenty of room between the marching ants and your subjects. Here, it, it might be a little close, but uh, let's try it. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. All right, and you can already see that there's already kind of a cool effect going on here uh, with uh, the blur making everything kind of look tiny. And to go back and forth between what it looked like before and what it looks like now, you can just come up and hit the preview button. And you can see what before, it's just kind of a flat photo, everything looks normal. And the preview, the, uh, the blur almost kind of makes your focus go right on the, the people, and they really do kind of look tiny. But once you have uh, this basic blur on, you can come down and change the, the sliders down here a little bit and just kind of see how it looks. Uh, we, you want to make sure you can see it's kind of getting close to the subjects. It's, um, it is touching the subject. The blur is touching these subjects down here, but that's okay because it really puts more of an emphasis on these these guys in the front. All right, once you kind of get that down, uh, and this might take a few times uh, because you know you're not going to get it right the first time typically, which is fine because I mean it's really simple to do. All right, once you're done with that, click OK. Right, and then you can just uh, click out anywhere to deselect uh, the selection. So we're almost done, right? Uh, every, the effect looks pretty good. Everything looks tiny. But um, since we want to make it look like toys, we kind of want to make uh, change the colors a little bit because toys are usually brightly colored, right? So what we can do is go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Hue and Saturation. All right, and then make sure we click the Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Once you've done that, you can click OK. 
All right, and now what we can do is we can change our masters, our reds, yellows, greens, all these different colors, but we can just kind of boost the saturation a little bit, almost to the point where it looks unrealistic. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, I think it looks pretty good. So what we did, uh, just to recap, was we went to the quick mask mode. We used the gradient tool to create a gradient in quick mask mode. And once we exited quick mask mode, we added a, uh, a lens blur to the selection. And once that was done, we uh, changed the saturation to make everything just a little bit more brighter and more vibrant. Okay guys, as, you can, as I said before, it's a really quick and simple tutorial. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to learn about Photoshop or really any other sort of software. And if you're interested in learning more about our summer camp programs, make sure you go to our website at computercamps.com and make sure to check us out on Facebook as well.